right, gassed up, ready to go. Got the new mirrors in the truck, airbags are aired up, goosenecks hooked on the back. Let's go pick up a new addition to the farm. That's the reason why I set this pickup the way I did. It's an oddball, a little different than most, but you know what, I kind of like that. So let's go get something. I'm gonna get the wife, grab a kid, not all of them, some are staying with grandparents, and it's uh, negative 10 degrees out, and we're gonna hit the road. Let's go. All right, you guys ready to see what we got? This is a, uh... what is that thing? It's big, it's bulky, it's, it's a scalper. And we're gonna use this to clean our yellow peas. At least we're gonna try. It was a good deal. The previous owners used it on hemp. They were trying the whole CBD hemp thing and unfortunately, due to some really terrible circumstances with contracts and unforeseen weather events, the hemp crop was destroyed. They lost out big and this machine basically was never used and uh, they had to get rid of it because they're getting out of that. So I feel really bad for them. There's some screens in there. So, but at least we're gonna give her a shot, see if this thing will do what we want it to do in our peas. And if it does, it'll save us a bunch of money every year. It'll pay for itself in just a couple years. So we're excited to give her a run. So I'm gonna hook the trailer, go do some shopping in the big city of Great Falls, Montana, and uh, come back and hook this up and go home. But you guys will see this thing running soon, so stay tuned. Well, we made it back. Pulled just fine. It's actually a really nice ride when you pull a trailer with that pickup. But besides that, let's talk about the cleaner here for a second. So what happens is there's two shaker trays in here basically, and the screens go on top. These little balls ride around inside here and they just make sure everything's clean so chaff doesn't build up in between the screens. And what happens is the product flows down through, a, a, you got kind of a chute on the top, and as it goes through, it runs it through each tray, which I'm sure there's a correct term for each one of these things, but you guys get what I'm getting at here. And the large particles, rocks, big chunks that you don't want, go across the top and fall out the back. And that's like the screenings or the whatever you wanna call it. So then the good stuff, which goes through the screens, goes out into an auger and into your truck. And that's what you want for seed. Now this doesn't have a fan on it. We're gonna hopefully add one here because it would be nice to get rid of some of the light material. But there's a motor right here and that just shakes everything and gravity just slowly flows down. And theoretically this thing can run about 500 bushels an hour. We'll see what we can do with it. But for the price, it was worth it. So. Uh, we got some modifying to do. We're gonna have to build some kind of skid or trailer or something to put it on it and uh, get it wired in. Here's, I think, where you attach the fan, which we don't have yet, but that's something we're gonna hopefully add on it. So, cool. I think it's a good buy. All right, let's take her inside. I'm gonna use the crane inside the shop for first time in a long time. Right now, it's pretty cold out. I'm not gonna start the loader or the tractor in this weather, and our skid steer is not strong enough to lift that thing. It's heavy. So let's put it in the shop. We'll play with it in there and see what we got. Wanna hear this thing start? I do. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty wussy. I need to do something about that. Stock exhaust, yeah. Cleaning this thing out, you can see all those hemp, hemp straw. I'm guessing what that is. I haven't actually ever really handled much hemp before, but uh, that's uh, that's what was in there when they were running this thing, and it obviously didn't work very good for what they were doing. So that's why they uh, sold it a lot cheaper than new, and it's practically brand new. We were cleaning out and looked in there, and there's like a tape measure or something. I don't know if you can try to work with the two magnets here. It's stuck back in there and I think this might have been where their problem was for why it was plugging. Lo and behold, this was sitting inside there blocking the all the waste, the large particles that come out the back end here. This magnet's an angle magnet and it was stuck in there. And something tells me that might not have let things flow very well. It might have been why it was plugged up. I don't know if that's why they didn't use this machine, but it definitely wouldn't help. <laughs> Got a free uh, angle magnet. Well, we just went in quickly and uh, dad found through a bunch of odds and ends, some cables and wires to get the 220 hooked in. It's Temporary. a runner. Temporary. Yeah, it's 
just to see how this is gonna work. This is just, just to run it. And so I believe we have it ready to go. So he's got a little bucket of peas here. Yeah, it's almost what we need to see. We need just a little bit more. Just a little bit. We're gonna dump that in there and see what happens. The right screens that were, to our knowledge is in this. So let's fire it up, see what happens. This is the switch. This is how we're gonna do it? Yeah, it's got a solenoid. Uh, that doesn't work very well. It brings a little bit. There, okay. Maybe I stepped on it. Okay, wow, that was cool. So we got a little bit here. There's a couple pieces of straw, those are hemp straw. That was in the system, so that just came out with it. We're gonna do stuff a little different. Let's throw some chunks of hemp straw more and some wheat. I'm gonna grab a couple rocks. And uh, that's the big one is rocks. That's what we're really trying to run this for. So let's see if we can prevent that from getting in our clean sample. There we go. Perfect. Let's try some of that. See if this thing can sort all that out. I'll show you guys where this all goes. The fine stuff, the really tiny cracks and little bits of dust should go in here, like this washer, lock washer I just popped in there. So that'll catch some of that, and that thing shakes all over the place, so it's gonna spill over. Large stuff like the rocks, which actually there's a couple already right here, should end up all down here. So let me, let me take a broom, I'm gonna sweep that out of the way so we can see all the fresh stuff that lands there. Okay. All right, I guess let's run it. Separated our grain pretty good. There's all your grain. The wheat, wheat kernels. And uh, the rocks, a lot of the hemp straw got through. But none of the rocks did that I see. Oh wait, that's a fine one. Little tiny pieces right there. Those are about the size of a piece. That makes sense that those got through. So the next question is how do we get the straw to stop going through it? Well, we really don't have straw with the peas. No. It's, it, it just didn't fall through the screens at all. You need wind. That's what the one thing this thing doesn't have, which we're going to try to adapt on, which I don't think this will be enough, is there is a way to mount an air system on here that'll suck out of this tube, out of the end, and over here. But it's quite an extensive system, so we're going to see if we can do it for a little less complicated and a little less money. All right. Well, we're one step closer. Well, looks like the big rocks were separated. That's the big issue. That's the number one thing that we're trying to do. Some of the little teeny ones, like say these right here, they're about the size of a pea. The top screen is 10 millimeters. So these turned just right are smaller than 10 millimeter and they were able to come through. The bottom screen is 5.5 millimeters. So that's where hopefully the larger peas will flow across that and come out here. And anything that's smaller, like sand and chips and cracks and shells that hopefully can fit through that will then go out the other side which not a lot was coming out except for the wheat definitely you can see in here definitely a lot of grain in there so the wheat did go through that i don't see now there's a couple grain kernels in here so some did make it through so anyways so far so good so from judging from what came out of this one, this is a small screen, we would like to see a little bit more peas come out of there. That's basically the 5.5 millimeter is not quite large enough to take some of the really tiny peas like this one right here. That's a pretty small one. You know, like the difference between these two piles. Yeah, yeah, we don't want those. We'd like to keep these larger ones. So that's something we might have to get a little bit larger screen on the bottom, 5.5 millimeter might not be enough. And then the grain kernels, some of the grain did come through this end, and that's another thing that maybe if it was a little bigger, the grain would fall through a little easier and not come out. I'm not worried about grain. We shouldn't even have that much wheat in our pea sample. And even if we did, planting wheat is not a big thing because we're gonna spray it out anyways. We have grass herbicides that'll take care of all that. 
There's a couple other varieties like Canadian Thistle that are very similar to the pea size that can get through, but we don't really have an issue with that on the farm, so we're not too worried. But overall, I think this should save us probably about four to $5,000 a year in cleaning costs after we pay for the several thousand dollar machine. So what we're thinking is we'd like to build a frame with some wheels under that cleaner so we can move it around because we've got different plates in the farm we'd like to take it and it's heavy and we don't want to always have to pick it up with the loader and put it on a trailer and move it. So we've got some old axles in this building. We're gonna take a look at it and see if they'll work. But if they do, there's a good chance we can put a set of wheels under pretty cheap. Let's go take a look. Oh, that feels nice. Yeah, I mean, they haven't hardly been used. So cool. There's uh, two of them here. That's what we need. Perfect. All right. It should have been four, but... Uh, oh, we might have used it. Maybe. Yeah, we probably somewhere. used it somewhere. There's an auger. Is this yeah, five yeah. inch? Uh, four? <laughs> four? That's amazing. Don't need to change that door. So what we're thinking, is we're gonna put a set of wheels in the back here. And these wheels will be removable because this thing needs to be on solid ground when you run it. Otherwise it's gonna shake the you know, these tires are gonna be good. So what we're gonna have is we'll use a high lift jack or some kind of jack. When you're in the position where you wanna be, you'll lift it up a little bit, pull the wheel off, set it down on the ground, do the same with the other side. And then on the front here, this is gonna be the front, if you wanna call it that. I'm gonna weld together an A-frame hitch. So we'll take some three inch square tubing, which I have some in stock, that's why we're gonna use it. And make a, a truss here or an A-frame, as well as the center, and then just make a pendle hitch in the front. And that way, um, you'll be able to hook on the back of a pickup or a side-by-side -side or whatever you're doing to move it around. And of course, we'll put a little jack on the front so when you unhook it, so that'll be nice. And that way, at least this thing's mobile. Then the next step's gonna be getting an auger on here to transfer from the truck to the grain cleaner. We've got some leads on that, so we're working on that. When that happens, it'll happen, but for now, we don't have it yet. Then a little bit of more wiring and some odds and ends, and we'll get it there, and then we'll clean some peas. Sound good? That's a first. Ever seen this happen before? Um, no, not to uh, break out the center part. I was just doing a slow straight cut down and it just all of a sudden stopped spinning. Pretty thin. While Nick is taking care of uh, the front of the, the hitch part, I'm gonna take and uh, we're gonna make removable wheels by pulling the wheel and axle out. We'll bolt them on, then when we wanna remove them, we'll just pull the bolt, slide them off, and set them down on, onto uh, ties or whatever that we want as far as the base. So what we have here is we had an old, old grain dryer that had wheels that removed and uh, here's one of them. So what you have here is this axle and I have a pipe here. This isn't the one I'm gonna use. I'm gonna cut a little longer one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to blast a hole with the uh, plasma cutter, stick the pipe I'll cut through, and then that will be a housing for that shaft to slide in and then we'll pin it and then when we're uh, done, we can just pull the wheels off and set it down and use it. So I'm gonna do the measurement and then get it to where we wanna get it. So roughly a quarter or so of the weight is gonna be on the tires up to a third. And then the rest of the hitch will take the other part. And that way there'll be enough weight on the hitch when we're towing that it isn't gonna get top heavy. And so it should work. So here it goes.
All right, well, front hitch is, is on. And it's uh, pretty strong so far, but I do need to weld the underside, so I'm not able to with the frame here. So once we take this wood frame off, lift it up, I'll be able to get underneath there and weld that up. I think they're leg arms approved welds, but I still have to build, obviously, some kind of place to put a pin through so when you hook it to your clevis. Did I say clevis? I meant pendle. I think we're about 90% of where we want it to be. Hitch is on, I think it's gonna hold. I have a jack to lift up the front tongue. And dad just finished getting the wheels mounted. Those wheels haven't had air in them probably for, uh, how old yeah, is that dryer? Uh, I would say 78, so. About the, the 77, old, as old as the shock. Yeah. So as old as this concrete on the floor, as how old those rubbers are on that tire. And it's holding air. But yeah, it was from an old grain dryer we have. Old grain dryer. So this way, it can be maneuvered around. And then when you get in a position where you're ready to clean, you get a high lift jack, or I might, like he was saying, add some more little pipe stubs for this uh, little hitch jack, a trailer jack, and put that on the ends. And then you jack up a corner, pull the wheel off, put a railroad tie or whatever blocks that we make, some type of stand. And we slide underneath, let it down, do that on all the corners. And then the unit will be nice and level, hopefully on the ground. You can use shims and stuff to level it. And that way it's portable. Because these machines are really designed to be inside of a building on a concrete floor somewhere. That's typically what they're made for. They're not really supposed to be portable like this, but we're making it portable. Back in the shop, looking at the cleaner, trying to decide what are the next steps we're gonna take. I think, one, for sure, we've got to get figured out how to mount an auger on here to feed this beast. And we were kind of looking at our options, whether we want to try to build an auger ourselves, amount of motor to it, or have it custom built. And I had checked out uh, Westfield augers uh, from AGI, and they have what's called utility augers. And they offer all types of lengths and sizes and already equipped with a motor and everything on it, which is awesome. So we're going to go ahead and go that route. So I think we're going to get a Westfield 6-inch, 16-foot auger with a three horse motor on it. I believe that's what they run as a three horse motor. It'll all be one package already set and done. Then all we got to do is to figure out how we're going to suspend that thing. So we're kind of preliminary thinking, having an arm that attaches off this heavy frame here that sticks out and then goes up to the auger, which will be sitting like this. And that way you can swing the auger back and forth and collapse as needed. So in transport, the auger will swing forward. It'll stick out front a little ways, come down, we'll have a cradle or somewhere back here that'll strap it down tight, and then it'll hang off the back when you're in transport. And then when you go to go to your bin or your truck, it swings out go underneath the bin hopper or the truck hopper, and there'll be a flexible spout that then goes into this hopper right here. Does that make sense? That's what we're gonna try to achieve. We'll see if we can get there. The other thing is too, <laughs> our uh, tire from like the 70s didn't hold air. The other side is, this side didn't, and I don't trust it anyway. So we tracked down and found in our supply of awesome tires, some old 15 inch trailer tires. The beads a little shot on them, but we've got tubes. So we're gonna throw tubes in those, throw those on there. It's just gonna sit for ages and then get used a couple times a year and then sit. So that's the next step. So tires, then we're gonna move this thing over a little bit, use the crane to suspend a pipe that is gonna be the mock-up of our auger, and then we can start fabbing up the arm, the support, that's gonna hold the auger. Sound good? Great, let's get to work.
So this is gonna be the arm that's gonna hold that auger. And I just got done putting a heavy walled pipe in the end of it, as well as cap in the end with the, I found the scrap piece, a bunch of holes cut in it, so I just used that to weld to the pipe. And I actually offset the pipe just a hair, so it's not perfectly true in there, it's slightly at an angle. And that way when we flip the pipe, this uh, arm over, when all the weight and everything's on this, it's gonna wanna sag a little bit with all the slop and the joint and everything. So by offsetting a little bit, it'll actually cause the arm to lift up just a hair, and then when the auger's put on the weight, it should balance out and hopefully I'll be level, theoretically. We'll see if that works. Dad's working on the bracket that's gonna hold it. It's gonna go right here. It's gonna have some heavy iron, light, uh, heavy flat iron come out on the top and bottom. This is a little wider than four inches. This is four inches. Theoretically, it should all work out great. So we'll put a bolt through, he'll put that on there. Arm will stick out, arm will be able to pivot forward or aft and forward. And then from there, we'll make the bracket then attach to, this is our makeshift auger. The auger that then lets it around. So it makes sense? Good. Lily, what are you, what are you doing in a pink snowsuit? What are you doing here? <laughs> hey. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm feeding the fish. <gasps> You're these fish? Uh-huh. Okay, here, here. Here, Whoa. Luke. That's a lot of fish food. What do you think, Luke? Dad. Yeah?